Welcome to the webinar. You have entered as an organizer and may now speak to any other organizers or panelists on the line. When you are ready to begin the presentation, press the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode.
Hi all. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, well, this is Mahesh. Uh, just wanted to check whether my audio is fine, and you can see the screen as well. Okay. Are you able to see screen? All right, thank you. Okay. Now, uh, uh, before we start, I just want to give a brief description about myself. Uh, I am Mahesh. Uh, I am an ETL testing uh, uh, project manager, uh, primarily working for a uh, CMM level 5 company as a test manager, working for an Australian-based uh, private bank. Uh, and uh, I have got around 13 years of experience into uh, testing, primarily into ETL testing. And currently, I'm managing a team of 40 people. Uh, I got seven years of experience in training as well, and this is my uh, after a long gap we have again started the eating testing classes. So uh, before we start, right, I would like to understand uh, the audience. Okay, so I am having some four questions questionnaires. Uh, I would uh, uh, like you to answer those. Okay, so the first one. goes this way okay. one second yeah so I have posted the first question all right okay Another five seconds before we close the poll. Good. Okay. So I see good number of answers. So the uh, so I see that less than fifty seven percent less than fifty seven percent of you are uh, uh, from non IT background, and uh, many of you are having less than two years of experience, or people are just starting their career. Okay, good, good enough. Uh, the second one is there's another question. Uh, please try to answer this as well. Okay, all right. So 50% of you are already trained. Oh, is that so? Okay, and only 30% of you are not trained. All right. The last question is, so if that is the case, we'd want to understand what is the expectation from this session. Okay. Okay. Another ten seconds before we close this poll. Excellent. Okay. All right. So what I understand uh, from this poll is. Uh, there is a mixed bag of audience here. One, um, a few of you are already having an experience, uh, are already trained on ETL testing, and you are expecting some hands on experience on ETL testing from this session. And few of you are uh, yet to start your career, and as well as you are not trained on any of the tools. All right, so what I'll uh, this poll helps me in uh, understanding the audience, and I'll Tune the course accordingly. All right. Now, so what is that we are going to deal today? So, what is an ETL? 
So the screen is good enough, right? You are able to see it. I mean, the font is enough, good enough, right? Okay. Now, in this business world, you see a lot of data coming from multiple systems. Right? Let's take a simple example. Let's take an, a, a bank. Okay? Or a department store. So, let's cons consider a bank. Bank has customers who are the ones who take the accounts be it a uh, savings account or credit cards or a loans mortgage loans or multiple types of loans okay or uh, it can be the vendors who are selling the machine machinery or the documents or the letters they are posting right so there are multiple type of information data that is flowing into the bank system so it's like this so i have an input data and output data just like the general ledger balance right so when when a lot of data is flowing into the uh, bank system that's where they started documenting it and using the papers now what happens with papers you you have a pile of papers to look into the data it be, it became cumbersome and a tedious task to look into necessary data so what was the solution the next level was the Excel sheets that were found. Now, prior to this, we had the general ledgers. Then the Excel sheets came. Now, Excel sheets had a limitation of some data. Now, that's where the need of database came into picture. Database, it's an or this helps in organizing the data into a structured way. All right, and then logical way. Now, a say, say suppose, why, how do we say structured or logical ways? A savings account guy, a customer, may not buy or sell the letters that we they will uh, the letters that a bank will be sending, right? So, joining a customer with the vendor has doesn't have any sense. Whereas in the database, you will have these kinds of logic where you will find the difference between who is a customer and who is a vendor okay so this way you will organize your data perfectly now what happens when you have a large chunk of data with you with bank say suppose bank so banks and banks have a hierarchy as well right a bank uh, a clerk a manager a sales manager so you have uh, multiple hierarchies in the data in the bank now each person would like to see the data in their own terms they don't need the other others information say suppose a clerk in the bank want to see how much has been deposited today right whereas for a sales manager He doesn't need how much has been deposited. For him, how many accounts are opened? That's his primary requirement, or that's that's what he wanted to see. Now, when the la when when there's a every data that is present in the bank database, the way one person is looking is different to the way other is looking, right? So you see the difference here. So a a, a one uh, the the persons in the bank or the uh, users in the bank have a different view to the data that is being deposited that is being uh, inputted into the database so this is where you will have to create a 
a view for each user right that's one thing the second thing is whatever is the necessary information that has to be understood simplified has to be provided to the user so i have a large set of data but that is not what i would require i would need it to be simplified and has to be shown in a way where it can be understood by the end user so for a clerk he want to see all the uh, he want to see the sum of amount but what does he have in the database he got the individual transactions right so at the end of the day he he cannot go and sum it up on for himself it is a tedious task for him again if the system provides him a way where he can see the total sum that will help him a lot him or her the same way for a sales manager how many accounts are open the count will help him a lot right so such a system is obviously of much demand in the current environment so what does it what does it mean is a data needs to be converted into information information right so this is where the databases are converted into data warehouses okay now the process of migrating the data from database to data warehouse is called as etl extract transform and load so in the current in the, in our example so what is it happening uh for from the clerk perspective whatever are the deposits are extracted from the database transform transform means for the clerk his his the the part, the purpose of the data is he want to see the total amount that is collected from the bank in the in the bank so that's where he is transforming the data into his desired format and then loading loading is so this sum of uh, total deposits is, lo is loaded into another system that we call it as data warehouse okay so this is a typical uh, uh, a simple example to uh, to showcase you what exactly a data warehouse is all about okay now to summarize it to summarize it i'll show you a typical uh, data data uh, etl architecture so if you see any uh, 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 what is a bi system so we uh, we call the entire uh, system as the bi system so bi means business intelligence so you have a lot of operation systems like for the bank all the deposits or the account opening we have multiple applications like erp crm application hr to maintain the uh, employee details finance team and others so these are your operational systems and there can be external systems like all you 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 must be aware that banks or any companies will have third party supporters right suppliers so those those data is not maintained in the typical uh, in house operation systems they will have an external sources like file systems where the uh, third party vendors will be keeping the data which in, in any format maybe a spreadsheet or flat files or xmls or legacy systems like mainframes so what happens is all these are heterogeneous systems so when i say heterogeneous systems which means uh, one system is 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 different to the other say suppose excel sheet is there and an xml file is there both are of different characteristics right now when you have to merge the data from these two uh, different systems it's not an easy task you will have to have some common buffer kind of system where or an application 
where you move this data from the heterogeneous system into one common format right that's where the extraction logic comes into picture now once you extract this heterogeneous data into one system you then transform and then load into the data data warehouse so we say enterprise data warehouse because it's for a large set of data so uh, think about any bank uh, say suppose you have city bank city bank has some millions of customers now in a day even a 10% of customers uh, deposit the money in the customer which is around 1 lakh 1 lakh customers of information means 1 lakh rows which is a huge set of data so that's the reason when i copy or extract the data from such huge data set you call it as enterprise data warehouse okay now from here which uh, the way we should look into or the way the end user has to look into data we have a presentation layer which we call it as uh, uh, the analytics or the reporting tools so in the market primarily bi is a bi is nothing but etl plus reporting okay so in the market uh when we say about etl testing it's more about uh extraction transforming and loading so how do you test it whereas if it is of bi testing it's a combination of both etl and reporting all right so what is that you require as as from the testing perspective what is that we require to know about so you need to understand the basics of database and its design how is the database design okay and then you should understand how you will extract the data from this database so how do you read or write a database right in a database so that we generally used you uh, generally we do using sql so we need to understand or we need to know about what is an sql how do you write queries okay the third is the knowledge about any of the etl tools so in market we got multiple etl tools there are uh, commercial tools and uh, uh, open source tools as well so commercial tools include informatica oracle data source ds and uh, we got data stage ssi is from uh, microsoft data stages from ibm etc whereas in open source we got pervasive and other tools okay now any of the knowledge uh, any of the tool if you have a knowledge it would be easy for you to understand how the uh, extraction transformation and loading is done so uh, so to look at to look back in a different way uh any uh, say suppose you got a web application okay so web application will be developed using which language a web application is developed using yes so it can be an html or java or javascript angular js bootstrap css etc right now similar way 
the etl uh, uh, what do you say the extraction uh, transforming and loading is uh, okay this okay, sorry i'm sorry uh, let me ask another question so what is the tool used for developing a web application so languages are multiple so what are the tools that are used for developing this web application or an environment to say precisely or environment Notepad, okay. You need Java JDK, right? Or for .NET, if it is, or if you are using .NET, you need a, uh, a .NET application, right? So this same way for even for ETL also, for ETL as well, you 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 need an application or a tool to develop the ETL logic. So such tools are called as ETL tools, right? So these are the ETL tools that I'm talking about. Okay, there was a question here. So what are these tools? Why are they used for? For that reason, I gave an explanation, okay? <clears throat> so when you talk about black box testing and uh, white box testing, From a web application perspective, what is a black box testing and a white? What is a white box testing? Any answers? Okay, there's one answer. Good. Black box testing is conducted by the tester. Okay. Black box testing is done more by the is done from the function testing perspective. Okay. White box testing is done by developer. Uh, okay, partially yes. Okay. So this is where okay. Uh, I'll okay. The so black box testing is more of what we see as an end user so it's about the functionality okay whereas white box testing is about how the logic or the code has been written so if you see if you look into the code that is been, that has been written by the developer and uh, and test it according to the requirement that's called as white box testing whereas black box testing is whatever you see the front end of the requirement the functional uh, part of the requirement that's called as black box testing. same way in the etl also when you extract a data you test it using the sql queries you look into the data and you test it Whereas white box testing is, you go into the tool and look for the logic that is written to extract or transform or load. Okay. So to, to summarize, in order to uh, do the white box testing, you need to have a knowledge about the tool, ETL tool. Okay. Now, these days, people are not, uh, if you might have heard about the concept of SDET. So, what does SDET mean? Software Development Tester, right? So, what does it mean is, a person or a tester should have a knowledge about development concepts also or the development tool so that as and when there is a requirement he will be ready to do the white box testing as well or he or she might have a complete understanding about the application okay gone are those days where a traditional tester is required now the, uh, the new concept is SDET. So similarly, even in ETL testing, earlier the concept was to check whether the data was loaded from, uh, correctly from source to target. 
that is from database to data warehouse. Now, slow and steadily, the job market has changed wherein people are asking for the knowledge about the tool, any of the ETL tool. So, you need to understand the tool as well. All right. Now, this is about this. And next is the Fourth, fourth, what uh, the the other things that we need to learn from this training is the basics of Excel, maybe scripting, VLOOKUPS, which means when you have to test the data that is migrated from source to target or from database to data warehouse, you you might you need to compare the data, right? So for data comparison, you generally do using Excel sheet. So as the number of rows are high and uh, the data complexity is more, you need to apply few logics. So that for that, you require lookups and uh, VB scripting knowledge. Okay. Or just the basic formulas to compare the data. All right. The fifth one is scheduling tools idea so what is a scheduling tool scheduling tool is you have to migrate the data from a database to data warehouse so for migration you require some schedulers let's take a typical uh, uh, banking application okay so in a banking application uh, the data from the uh, database has to be uh, refreshed in the data warehouse every one hour okay or uh, let's take a, uh, a retail store the data from retail stores database has to be migrated into data warehouse every uh, uh, at the end of the day whereas uh, uh, time bound uh, or uh, real time environments like share market or mutual funds the information has to be synced into the data warehouse every five or ten minutes so there should not be any lag so if you see uh, all these uh, based on the type of application or the requirement you have to schedule the etl tool uh, 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 upon the requirements say to five minutes or one hour or per day right so this has to be either manual way or using some tool right so if you are doing manual way, that's okay. But if you are doing it using some tool, you need a scheduler tool, right? So you, you cannot every time do a manual intervention. For that, you will be using some tool. So we have some tools like DAC, Data Warehouse Admin Console, okay? Or uh, I, I tool, which is a, a, a small open source tool. And then we got uh, 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 workflow monitor in, in in informatica itself so these are few scheduler tools that we got which we need to have an understanding about them okay now last but not least is unix so uh, if we talk about uh, informatica informatica is based on uh, informatica and oracle are uh, based on Unix and Run. They are, they are on Unix platform, okay? So if you are doing a manual scheduling, right, you need to have an understanding about Unix commands, all right? Or if you are using SSIS tool, you need to understand how a package, so this is based about, we're based on Windows, right? It's a Microsoft tool, SSIS is. So for SSIS, it's based on my uh, Windows. So Windows will have packages. So how to run a package, basic run, run commands. So as part of this training, we will give you a fair idea about all the six points that we covered. The basics of database and how the design is done. What is a uh, what is uh, the SQL? How do you read, write, create using uh, create data in a database using SQL query? And then the knowledge about the tool, which which uh, primarily we will be focusing on Informatica, 
but you need to understand that uh, any of the tool can be uh, can be learned easily it's the logic or uh, how the etl uh, testing that needs to be done has to be understood by you tool is secondary this can be learned in a day or two so we will be focusing on informatica uh, we will try to showcase ssis as well but uh, that depends on the time okay but uh, primarily we will be uh, uh, concentrating on informatica tool and then uh, then what is then the basics of excel how do you do the data comparison how do you write v lookups uh, how do you uh, uh, merge the data how do you truncate the data using the excel that will be explaining and then the scheduling tools primarily our focus will be on dac okay and the basics of unix commands so this is what you can expect from the training all right and last but not least the scope of automation in etl testing so automation is both the, the data of migration and testing uh the performance testing load testing these are the primary uh, focus uh, in any of uh, automation things right so why do we call uh, why, why are we including performance and load testing reason being with large set of data that is being copied from database to data warehouse it's obvious that you you cannot take uh, ages for loading the data or lo migrating the data right so you need to have a powerful tool to copy from source to target so that's where the etl tools come into picture but if someone has to quantify or uh, confirm that this tool is copying the data uh, at this speed or uh, the the load uh, that the server is taking is good enough to handle it will not break so such type such uh, statistics are obviously in, in need for the management or the client right so all this can be done using the performance testing or load testing now from data migration or testing perspective because you are testing a lot of data manually it is not that <laughs> manually it is not a easy job job to test billions of records right so it is obviously or it is inevitable that you will have to automate the data validation as well so uh, primarily we will show you using some in, uh, some tools like dvo data validator or data validator or we have uh, other tools like etl validator or you can use uh, uft or selenium or uh, python scripting to compare the data so our focus will be on uh, etl validator okay uh, we will show you how the tool does but we will not go in it in depth of uh, uh, the etl tool actually the validator tool okay we will show you how it is done using etl validator uh, if you are interested you can do using uft and selenium or python scripting as well this we will see if we can have a uh, if we can include it in the live project that's sometime on the line uh, all right so this is what on a high level you can expect from this training I think uh, I am done for the day now. So if you got any questions, you can post them. Uh, you can raise your hands so that uh, I can unmute you and you can speak as well.
Okay, there's a question from Sridhi. Basically, it's BI is equal to ESI testing. So, what is ESI testing? I didn't understand, uh, Sridhi. Okay, let me unmute you. Yeah, Sridhi, go ahead. Sorry, I put ETL testing. Oh, okay, is it ETL? So, BI testing is a combination of ETL plus reporting testing as well. Okay. Uh, reporting testing uh, if you have if you uh, if you would see uh, the data is coming from multiple uh, tables right so you need to uh, combine the data see in a uh, required format so you will have to apply filters say suppose uh, a sales manager is looking into multiple states of uh, usa okay he want to see only for new york state or uh, uh, new jersey so what he will, what he or she has to do is he has to filter on this uh, city or states, right? So ET, uh, reporting tools will give those facilities like filters, uh, drilling down, uh, uh, drilled up, or you will apply the other columns where you want to see a combination. So such facility is given by the reporting tools. So generally, ETL testing plus reporting testing is what is that desired in the market. The combination of ETL plus reporting is BI testing. Okay. Uh, yeah, basically, when you see the SQL commands, so mostly the SQL command uh, knowledge of uh, uh, TSQL or uh, developer or DBA, oh, which is the. Oh, oh, you mean to say what what is, which is the best one that you are saying? No, uh, because I see most of the commands of SQL are into the ETL. So, what is the basic knowledge of uh, you know required for it? Is it a TSQL, Transact SQL, or or it be a developer uh, knowledge or a database manage administration manager knowledge? Okay. Required to learn. Yeah, right. I got you. So basically, right, you need to understand what is a schema. Schema is the uh, uh, how the database is defined. So, what are the tables? Uh, how are they related? The primary key, foreign key concepts, the constraints, etc., uh, the max length, etc., that define the schema of the database. So, when a data warehouse is created, which means the tables are created and they are related to each other, and the constraints, maximum length, the data types, etc., are defined. Right? So, which means this is a create. SQL query, right? Whereas if you are inserting, modifying, deleting data, these are your transactional queries. These are done using the transactional queries. So that's your TSQL. So primarily for, from ETL testing perspective, you need to know or these are called as DML, okay, and these are DQL. Uh, so you need to understand or you need to know a knowledge about how do you create uh, tables, alter tables, and as well as the transactional queries, which are the, the data manipulated DML queries, okay. And to understand the ETL2 logic, you need to have a fair idea about PLSQL. It is not mandatory that you should know the complete, uh, you should know PLSQL, uh, but it is better to have uh, knowledge about PLSQL as well. And there are mar there are market like, you know, there are, there are Oracle SQL, uh, uh, Microsoft SQL. Yeah, Which so one? databases are multiple types. But there, there are multiple vendors in database, Oracle, SQL Server from, uh, uh, Microsoft, then you got Teradata, right? So for each tool, you got SQL queries. I mean, see, they they look one and the logic wise, they are one and the same. There's only simple difference in the syntax. Okay, Oracle Oracle SQL, SQL Server SQL. There's a little difference in the syntax. Rest all is the same. Okay. Yeah. 
it's just the syntax you need not worry that sql server sql uh, server sql is different and uh, oracle is, sql is different in the training okay. site as part of the training we will try to showcase you the difference between both of them as well. okay that is ddl create sql is ddl data definition sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry ddl yeah that is data manipulation all right now the second one is data manipulation first one is data definition yeah i i changed it yeah yeah now i can see there was a slow oh, okay yeah any other questions ready no that's fine all right thank you thank you hi swati you had a question yes uh, can you provide the also uh, training for etl tool just like informatica yeah so uh, as part of this training right uh, our focus will be on uh, informatica okay so you right. you focus on informatica as well yeah our focus will be on informatica only we will try to okay. uh, uh, have a, some understanding about ssis as well but this is uh, that depends on the time that we have but primarily and what's about and what's about selenium because it's different tool yeah selenium is for automation so that is a separate tool that you will yes. have to you will have to take so when in life because everybody asking nowadays everybody asking for selenium tools you do you know automation testings and then they first raise the question do you know selenium yeah right right but that is a separate training uh, that will be handled by the other uh, trainers but our focus will be on informatica and okay so you provide the etl testing training yes right right, right. and so, who who give the selenium automation testing uh there are other trainers uh, uh, a team will help you about it uh, we will ask uh, i'll ask the team to uh, get back to you about this okay okay thank you so in uh, informatica right uh, there are uh, four uh, uh, sub tools in it okay uh, power center designer this is where the uh, etl logic has been written and you got the workflow manager where you define the workflows and the monitor where you see uh, or where you schedule the workflows that are created okay so as part of this training we will be concentrating on these uh, sub tools Okay. okay. Any other questions, Swati? No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vani, hi, Vanita. Uh, I think you will have to unmute yourself. I did unmute you. Uh, okay so this training will be on reporting and bi sql admin no uh, this training is about the etl tool informatica and how do you test using it how, how awesome. what typical test cases are written uh, in uh, etl testing so that will okay be awesome okay so how long is the training this is primarily for uh, 20 days of training Okay. And and how much is it? Is there a fee or uh, uh we will discuss we will send you a note about it. Uh we will have an offer. Okay. Cuz I'm very interested. Oh, oh sure, sure. Uh, the team will mm -hmm. get back to you regarding this, okay? Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. okay there is another question here so what is the knowledge of what is the uh, how do i map the test planning uh, how do i write my test planning okay good all right so the question here is 
how is the test plan different from the traditional testing but the test plan for testing and etl testing follow the same uh, same format okay but how do you uh, write your uh, test scenarios uh, what is the uh, environment details or what are the environment details the contingency plan okay the dependencies these differ from one application to the other application just like in web application testing and the database testing how this uh, the the scenarios differ the same way even in etl testing also they differ but on a high level the sections or the uh, uh, whatever goes in the test plan document they are same from the traditional testing as well as etl testing so as part of this training we will cover these testing artifacts so when i say artifacts it means how do you do the requirement analysis how does it look how how does a testing requirement and a, uh, the the web application testing requirement document and how does a uh, etl testing requirement document looks like so what's the difference okay and then uh, how do you write the test plan how do you write test cases right and then when you open defects how do you do them so what is that you will have to uh, write in the defects so the defect description right and then the closure documents so once the testing is completed you will have to send a test closure reporting right so how do you uh, uh, write those documents so all this will be covered as part of the training so when you when you okay so how do you do a requirement analysis the next question is so requirement analysis the way you do for a, a, a traditional web application it's quite different the way you do for etl testing so so you will have uh, so this we are we are talking in terms of uh, tables and uh, views right in the database so how do you analyze a table that is being created in the data warehouse so what are the column dependencies what is the data type maximum length is there any constraint defined so this is how you evaluate a requirement on a high level so as part of this training we will let you know how to do a requirement analysis for uh, etl requirements okay all right thank you any other questions okay so do we create do we how do we create okay the question here is how do we create mappings in informatica no as a tester we don't create mappings in informatica it's the developer's job we read the mappings and the workflows thus created using these mappings we read them we understand the logic written in the mapping okay for a simple example right i have a source table which has employee details okay now it has employee id the uh, first name mid name last name date of birth okay whereas in my data warehouse the table name is changed to w underscore emp underscore details and the columns in it are employee id full name and date of birth okay now what's in the requirement they will say that these are the columns that are present in source and these are the columns that are present in the target 
employee ID is a straight copy of whatever is the employee ID in the source table. Whereas full name is a combination of first name, middle name, and last name. Okay. So full name is equal to first name plus mid name plus last name. And date of birth is a straight copy. So when you uh, when you go and look into the mapping that is created for this target table, you will open it and see whether for this particular column the logic is written like this. So in the mapping they will write it as concatenate. In SQL we have concatenate function. So concatenate first name, mid name. And lastly, so this is how the logic will be written. Whereas, if you have to test it, you will write an SQL query select employee ID, comma, first name plus mid name plus last name, comma, date of birth from employee details table. This is on the source query that you will write. This query output should be same as select employee ID comma la, full name comma dob from w underscore emp underscore details. So if you see this is how you will be doing your black box testing. Whereas from white box testing, you will open the mapping. You will go and see whether the mapping logic is being written correctly for this particular column. Right? So this is what as a tester you will be doing. You will not create a uh, mapping. You will not write any or you will not insert any data. It is done by the developers and the scheduling tool. It's just that you will validate whether the data is same both in the source and target. Got the question? Got the point now? Excellent. All right. Uh, any other questions? Okay. So, will you help us in understanding the test estimations? Okay. Estimations. Excellent point. Yes. So, estimations uh, are more of the headache of test lead or the test manager. Uh, so if you are uh, interested or if you are if you would like to understand yes we will be uh, taking a use case at the end of training and will help you understand it, how to do the estimates do we have any tools for it no 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 uh, uh, estimation uh, at this point uh, I uh, we don't have any tools to do it we generally use Excel based uh, model to develop the estimates yes so uh, at the end of the tra training right once you are familiar with the ETL tool concepts the testing how to do the testing we will showcase uh, we will showcase you using a use case how to do an estimates this use case will be used for uh, developing the test artifacts like uh, whatever we discussed the test cases test plan document how do you operate effects etc okay Thank you. Yeah. So there's there's another question. What are the different management tools? 
tools for ETL. See, uh, you need to understand that for uh, ETL, there is no separate uh, defect management tool. For general testing, whatever are the defect management tools that we use, we will be using them as well. Okay, so we will use HPALM. It was earlier called as QC, or uh, you can use uh, Jira, etc. <coughs> Bugzilla, etc. Okay. Yes, Shridi, you had a question. Yeah, basically the informatic regarding the informatica. Okay. So, what is it and how it is actually? So, uh, informatica tool, uh, as I said earlier, is a combination of four sub tools. Okay. We have uh, uh, power center designer, where the the mappings are created. Okay. This is the one which I'm showing. Okay. And then we got a workflow manager where the mappings are created. So if you see, this is the tool. Repository is where you will create the definitions for the source and target. Okay. So we will show you how do you connect to your source database? How do you connect to your uh, target data database? So how do you configure them? So that, uh, that is the task of the uh, informatic admin. But we will show you how to read those. So what is that it is required for us to understand whether the correct repository or whether the custom correct database has been uh, assigned or not. Okay. And then we got uh, power center where designer. This is where the actual uh, mappings or the code is written. Okay. So we'll showcase you how do you connect to it. How do you open a mapping? Uh, how, uh, what is that you will have to understand? What are the sections or what are the tabs that you will have to look up to understand the various mappings that are written? How do you relate these mappings? How do you check the relationship between the multiple mappings? And then workflow manager is where the workflows are created. A workflow is a combination of one or more mappings, which means, say, suppose there are uh, there's a there are tables for employee details. So one table is for employee details. The other table is for uh, employee salary. You package them and then copy the data of these two tables at one go. So that comes with the understanding about the requirement. So you cannot uh, combine an employee details table and a sales target table and load them at one shot. It might happen, but so you are grouping logically so that logical grouping and uh, definition is given in workflow manager now you schedule the workflows in the workflow monitor so we said about the tool right uh, scheduling tools right so in for informatica in-house we have this informatica uh, power for uh, workflow workflow monitor this is where you run so if you see this this has been scheduled for every one hour okay uh, so how do you how to test the scheduling part uh, so the requirement may say that for every 30 minutes the data refresh has to happen so this is where you will be seeing whether that that has been done or not okay so this that's is basically of, uh, I'm sorry so the other thing is once you run the mappings or the workflow right you will see the pass and fail status now, if any failures are there, you will you can go and see oh, what is the reason for it. So you can see here whether the mapping has run successfully or not, how many rows have been copied. So if there is any issue, you can go and see why the mapping has failed. So this is uh, both for uh, monitoring as well as scheduling. Okay. Yeah, Srini, you had it is basically like SSMS or SSMS. Uh, you mean to say SSIS? Um, all are say SS, SQL Server Management Studio or SQL Server Integration. Uh, yeah. So SSIS and Informatica are the tools. Uh, SSIS is from Microsoft. Informatica is in, uh, from the other vendor. So no, the, the perf uh, I mean to say the tools are same or are there any so difference? The tools, UI looks different. Uh, UI is a bit different. Uh, but the way they, they they operate are the same. The logic will be the same. I mean, logic will be written same. But how do you see? It's like this. 
the java or the uh, a web application developed by java using java or dotnet looks like the same but how it has been uh, uh, packaged or how do you write the code is different right the same goes with ssis and uh, informatica Yeah, when you see here uh, in this one in this tool, you can also write code and also so performance testing is also done. So there is. Yeah, I mean that's what look and feel. The UI is uh, a bit different to what it is in SSIS. SSIS which one? works on package model. Here it is. Uh, 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 what do you say? Uh, SQL based logical model. This one is. most um, we will be working on most on which tool so this informatica so in the market right right now informatica is the leader uh, majority of uh, again it depends on the uh, uh, what do you say the uh, the client as well so someone might look for a open source tool they don't want to uh, spend much so they will go for uh, open source tools like for resume uh, recently oracle also sorry recently new uh, some other tool came Just forgot to pay. Okay. Whereas if it's a heavy application, uh, the data is more, then people will go for Informatica. Again, uh, the source system and the target system also matters here. So people are uh, few few clients might go with uh, Microsoft tools. So if they are using SQL Server, then they will prefer SSIS because it comes with a package. Uh, till 2020, Oracle has tied up with uh, Informatica. so their uh, contract will end in 2020 uh, right now oracle has come up with their own etl tool or, or ods oracle data grid okay that's their own tool so it depends on what is the source system what is the target so there are multiple factors that that define what sort of etl tool we we'll use but uh, in the market right now informatica is the leader does anyone has the cloud also in this tools yeah or, uh, or ods comes with cloud as well informatica also is on cloud but our our training will primarily focus on uh, the commercial uh, informatica tool okay Any, any informatica any other any other tools uh, come only oracle uh, pervasive pervasive is also on cloud data stage recently they are they are going coming on cloud uh, others i will have to check but yes at this point uh, our primary focus is on commercial tools okay thank you yeah thank you any other questions team okay okay there is a question about sql yes see as i said earlier yes we will we will focus on uh, the basics of sql and basics of plsql but then again plsql will take a lot of time so we don't want to lose our focus on uh, on the core core issue so our core uh, requirement is etl testing plsql yes we will give a glimpse about it okay so as uh, the next question is about the scheduling tool yes so we'll showcase you uh, what is dag bac how do you use it all right all right any other questions okay okay so there was a question here uh, as i said earlier right what are the best practice oh, sorry i i didn't cover this okay so the question here is so what are the best ways of doing the etl testing okay so from testing perspective 
we will show you some uh, we will showcase some good practices good or best practices uh, how do you analyze the existing mappings so we all might not be working from a, uh, working on a project which is starting from scratch so you, we might come in midway where the product project has been already developed mappings are already in place so you might be working on an existing mapping where a, lo a little bit of logic is changed so how do you uh, how do you understand the entire requirement so what's the best way to know so these uh, best practices will be showcased as part of this training a simple example is um, say suppose uh, i have 25 mappings or 25 workflows which use uh, some 10, uh, 100 mappings i might have a i might join in a project such as this project where already these mappings are there so there is a mapping one mapping change request came so i will have to check whether this mapping has an impact on the other mappings as well so this can be done using the columns that are present in the tables used in the in the mapping so this is a uh, this is the best way to find out what are the other mappings that are impacted okay so uh, as a tester right uh, what from my experience i learned is you will have to maintain an excel sheet by release wise okay where it will it will help you to understand what is the mapping what are the tables that are impacted because of it so it's it looks like this similarly workflow name mapping name table affected ta target table source table target columns source columns target data type source data type so these are typically the columns that we uh, or these are the uh, points that we need to have a track every release so it's like this so what happens uh, for example uh, there is an employee uh, as we discussed earlier we had the employee details table where uh, earlier employee id was uh, care and has a maximum length of 25 okay so this is i'll mention those details here what is the mapping what is the corresponding workflow now tomorrow it has been changed from care to var care the data type has changed from care to var care so i'll keep a note of it so that way i'll i'll know that what was it earlier in the prior release and what is that now this will help us in understanding what are the tables and columns and what is the source what are the target columns what are the source columns that were earlier now because of which we will know what are the mappings that are affected vice versa uh, thus what are the workflows that are affected so tomorrow when one mapping is changed we can do a requirement analysis say, say, uh, by saying that hey i see that because of this mapping the other mappings are also getting affected right so that's how your requirement analysis will be made easy okay so such uh, uh, tips or best practices will be uh, discussed during this training i know for few it would be like uh, uh, some uh, physics or uh, some something uh, alien kind of stuff but as and when the training progresses you will be understanding all these concepts All right. Any other questions?
all right then i don't see any other questions from you guys from you all thank you for joining the session so we'll have another session uh, coming nine uh, that will be uh, uh, more about the etl tool so we'll show you the etl tool and the uh, database we'll be covering is um, oracle database okay so we'll showcase you about the tool and uh, about the database as well and some best practices and after that uh, we will start the actual classes, the paid classes. The course will be of 20 days. We will extend uh, as and when it is required. So 20 classes of one end of our duration. Okay. <clears throat> the payment details will be discussed by the team. All right. All right then. Thanks all for joining the session. See you on 9th again. Bye bye.